Talk fans. Today we are still on topic of transfusion medicines or blood bank. Last week we talked about genetic makeup, genotype, and phenotype of ABO blood groups. If you missed that, don't worry about it. You can check it out at the end of this video. Today we will be focusing on ABO subgroups. I also include timestamps in the description box down below, so you can refer to it at any time. Without further ado, let us all click the like button, share, subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell. All testing should be performed as soon as possible following collections to minimize the chance of folly positive or folly negative reactions that will occur due to improper storage or contamination of the specimen. Any discrepancy that occur should be resolved before ABO blood group assign. Side note, do not use sample that draw into the gel separator tube because the gel will interfere with the testing and could give you false results. However, if the patient need blood emergently, do not refuse giving blood because you can always give group O for RBC or group AB for plasma and plasma products. I will talk more about blood product choices in emergency case at a later time. Nonetheless, it is wise to give patients his or her blood type and cross-match compatible whenever it is possible. Before talking about unexpected reactions for the subgroups, we should know what we are really looking for first. In most patients, these are the reactions that we will expect to see when performing ABO typing tests. This is a summary table of how the reaction should look like for each blood group. The testing procedures and methodology will follow in the next video. Blood group O. This person do not have enzyme to add sugar to convert H antigen to O antigen. Since the ABO antibody are naturally occurring, which means a group O person will have anti-A and anti-B. Blood group A. The person will have A antigen on the surface of red blood cells. Our body does not program to generally produce antibody toward our own antigen, which means that a group A person will make anti-B antibody and not anti-A. An individual with group B blood type, this person will have B antigen on the red blood cells and we can expect to find anti-A in this person's serum. A person with AB blood groups, will have both A and B antigens on the red blood cell surface, which means that this group of people will not have anti-A or anti-B. Now that we understand and know what to expect for common blood groups reaction, we can then take a look at the unusual reactivity. You will think of ABO subgroup or discrepancy when you perform ABO grouping testing and the forward and the reverse doesn't match. ABO subgroup represent phenotype showing weaker reactivity with commonly used reagent. Subgroups are more common in group A individual. The most common subgroups that are encountered are A1 and A2. There are other subgroups of A, but these two are the most common ones, so we will be focusing on A1 and A2. We can suspect A subgroup when the forward give A blood type and the reward give a strong reaction with B cells but a weak reaction or rough with A1 cells, which means the individual may have one of the A subgroup with anti-A1 antibody. We already talked about how the reaction should look like for group A blood type, but how can you tell if the patient is A1 or A2? Is there a way to tell that? Yes, you can, and let me tell you how. Here is the reactions you expect to see if you test the patient's RBC with anti sera A and anti sera A1 lactin. For the patient with group A1, there will be agglutination for anti-A and anti-A1 lactin. But for the people with A2 subgroups, they will show the reaction with anti-A1 reactions but not anti-A1 lactin. In short, group A1 RBC react with both anti-A and anti-A1. Group A2 RBC react with only anti-A1 and not anti-A1 lactin. Anti-A1 
Anti-A1 is naturally occurring IgM cold reactant antibody. And if the individual is only produced IgM, it is unlikely to cause a transfusion reaction. However, in some individual also produce IgG, which cause a transfusion reaction in 37 degrees Celsius. Side note, inheritance of an A1 gene produce higher concentrations of enzymes than A2 genes. These higher concentrations of enzymes allow the conversions of almost all H antigen into A1 antigens on the red blood cells. I want to point out that we can classify A subgroup into A1 and A2, but the sugar that convert H antigen into A antigen is still an acetyl D galactose amine. Here is a table showing reactivity of A subgroup. Subgroup of B are rare and much less frequent than A subgroup. There are a few techniques that can be used to identify weak B subgroups. First, strength and type of agglutinations with anti-A, anti-A comma B, and anti-H. Second, absorption illusion study with anti-B. Third, the presence of B substrate in saliva. Fourth, molecular testing. Here is a table showing reactivity of B subgroup. Thank you for staying with me until the end. What do you want to know next? Do you want to know more about blood bank, chemistry, or microbiology? If you have any burning questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Lastly, if you have not done so, please like, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell. I will see you in the next episode of Blood Talk. Happy learning, my fellow blood bangers. As always, remember, your blood tells you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye.